In this video, we're gonna do a comprehensive tutorial on skipping rope for boxing. And in this video, I'm also featuring the cross rope. So not only are we gonna cover a number of tools and techniques for enhancing your skip rope, but I'm gonna show you how you can use the cross rope to enhance your boxing in ways that you otherwise couldn't with a regular speed rope. So there are three components to skipping rope that we're gonna cover in this video. The first is fundamentals. You have to build up the fundamentals so that you can have consistency in your skipping. That consistency is gonna help with your coordination between upper and lower body that you often use in boxing. And that consistency is gonna help with your cardiovascular development so you can go long enough to get the cardiovascular effect. The next aspect is movements. In boxing, we're not moving up and down, straight up and down like we are with skipping rope. Most of the movement is side to side, lateral with stops and starts. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a number of skip rope exercises with stops and starts and lateral movement that's gonna carry over into your boxing. It's gonna improve your footwork, it's gonna improve your speed and your agility. The last important component is intensity. Most of the time when you're training your boxing, working a good shadow boxing round, sparring round, or round on the heavy bag, if you really monitor your intensity, it's about 75 to 90% of your maximum heart rate. However, when we're skipping, because we're very efficient with that technique, most of the time we're about 60 to 70% of our maximum heart rate. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a number of workouts and ways that you can up your intensity to match what you're doing in your boxing, as well as how to use the cross rope to intensify your workouts and use the heavier ropes to get more muscular strength and endurance. Okay, so the most important part about skipping rope is to get that basic rhythm, the fundamental rhythm, to put your hands and your feet together. And if you're a beginner, one of the best ways to do this, without having to worry about coordinating your feet, whether you're gonna screw up with the skip rope, is just to swing the skip rope beside you and take little hops at the same time. So this is exactly how we teach beginners. You're gonna take the rope in your hands and start circling here, using your wrist beside you. And you can let it tick on the floor. And once you hear the tick, you're gonna just take a little jump. Now for now, it really doesn't matter how high you jump, you just wanna take those small jumps to time the rhythm of your feet with the roll. And if you wanna really build up the consistency, let's say you're gonna skip rope for uh, intervals of three minutes or five minutes, you can even just go like that for three to five minutes. Working that basic skip. That's gonna get your body, your hands and your feet together, all integrated in the motion. This is the best way to start. So another basic rhythm that you can do before you actually get into skipping and hopping over the rope is making the figure eight or crisscross with the rope around your body. And this is great for a couple reasons. First of all, if you still want to get into the rhythm without having to worry about the rope catching your feet, without actually having to skip and jump over the rope. But it's also essential for when you're skipping and you might want to take a little break in between your actual jumps. Especially if you're a beginner, you're going to need those breaks. So first thing you're going to do is you take the rope in both hands and you're going to start, you're going to go over to your left. So you swing over and see how my right hand is over my left. Then on that same side, I make a figure eight. The left is gonna go in front of my right. Then I'm gonna bring it across my body. Left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left. Now let me just go a little bit faster for you. And then I'll break it down. Okay, so that's how it is a little bit faster. To break it down slow again, nice and easy, I go here. Right over left. Then left over right on the same side. Then left over right on the other side of the body. Then right hand over left. And once you get into that rhythm, over top, back. Over top, back. Over top, back. That's going to allow you to put sort of swivel the rope beside you without actually having to jump and clear the rope. And this is sort of a second way to build up a rhythm before you're gonna get into the actual jumping and clearing of the rope. So next we're gonna get into the basic skip and that's gonna really help you build up your consistency. But before we get into that, I wanna show you something that I like about the cross rope here. 
these components, first of all, this is a ball bearing swivel. So it's different from your typical speed rope that has a plastic attachment. And if you've ever seen in my previous videos, you'll see knots in my rope. I tie my rope because often with a speed rope, it's going to break right around here. And then you have to remove the attachment and untie the knots just to keep this rope alive. But you're not going to have any problems with that, with the cross rope. This thing is well built and this ball bearing swivel allows it to keep going and allows it to last. So when you're working with this sort of thing, you got a product that is pretty durable. It's going to last you quite a while. So let's go on to the basic skip that's uh, going to help you with the fundamentals for skipping rope and build up to the more advanced stuff. Okay. So the first thing is with the basic skip is you don't have to do too many at once. You just want to get into your flow, maybe get five or ten skips, and then you can take a break and then keep going. Your goal with all the basic fundamental skipping is to get to about 15 to 20 minutes non-stop. But even just in the beginning, five to ten skips, and then you can start to put those together to get to about 100 skips or around a minute, and then slowly build that up. So first, all you're going to do is from your position, you can even start with a rope behind you like so. And just take small jumps, nice and easy. This is your basic skip right here. Now, I'm going to take a little break. This is where that little swivel comes in that we showed earlier. If you want to just take a little break and keep the rope going, and then I can get back into it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is your basic skip right here, just building up maybe five to ten at a time. Eventually, after a few days or a few weeks, go a minute straight, a few minutes straight, and then ideally getting up to about 15 to 20 minutes non-stop on the basic skip. That's your first long-term goal with skipping rope. Okay, so the next move we're going to go over technique for skipping rope is the basic kick out. And this is one of my favorite if you want to go a long time for long duration skipping. First, I'm going to demonstrate it without the rope, and then we're going to add the rope so you can work it. You can also practice this, again, separately. Now, all these moves for the fundamentals for skipping rope are just going to allow you to have more fun, go a little bit longer and last, mix it up, have a little bit of variety with your skipping rope. Also, again, with all these moves, you're not landing in the same spot the exact same way, so it gives the muscles a little bit of a break. If you're just doing the basic up and down, your muscles are going to get a little bit tired doing that same move, so you're going to want to mix it up. And these are some ways you can mix it up. So first, with the kick out, each move has a little hop. So first here, I'm going to go and I kick out my right foot. Then as I go back to center, I'm going to do a little jump jump and then back. Then I jump and I switch the left foot, left. Each time there's a jump, that's when the rope is going to clear. Jump out, jump out, jump out, jump out. This is the basic kick out for skipping. Over it again, little jump, jump, out, jump, 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 jump. And then you can just start to work this like here. Just an easy rhythm. Now you can even do that with the rope swinging beside you. You don't have to worry about clearing it just yet. Like so. And then when you're ready, you just bring the rope into play and you can start working your skipping with the kick out. This is one of the easiest moves. Once you get it down, it's one of the best moves for being able to go a long duration. I find it the easiest for 10, 15 minute skips, going that little bit longer. So here I go, start with my basic, and then kick, kick. Every time there's a jump, kick, 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 kick. I can switch back to my basic, and then back to kicking. And then even here, if I need a little break, like we showed earlier, it's figure eight, and then back into it, so I can get a little break and keep going. The kick out, one of my favorite to mix up a little bit of variety and so you can go for longer skips. All right, so the next one we're gonna go over is the inside switch step. And this is also great for backwards motion. I'm gonna show you how you can work this later, moving around with the skip rope. Now we're just gonna go over the fundamental motion. So here as I go on my feet, every time 
I bring my one leg out, I'm gonna take a little jump. So here I jump, and then I switch, switch, switch. And as you see, as I'm doing this little switch, my feet are in the air right when they're together. That's really slow. But when I do it quicker, it looks like this. Nice and easy, much easier when you do it quick. And you can see right in that center point, my feet are in the air, right there. And as, a, as well, like I said earlier, you can work this movie backwards, like so, and I'm gonna show you how to do that later with the rope. So for now, let's add in the skip rope and see if we can get this going together. You're gonna start with your basic skip, up and down, and then all you do is kick the one leg up and the other, and then switch back and forth. You go back to your basic skip, kicking out, even taking a little break if you need it, and then back, inside switch step. This sort of footwork with the inside switch step is similar to a back pedal in boxing, sort of like alley footwork. And it all starts really from here, just switching the feet. So this is one of my favorite skip rope moves for working that backward motion and also mixing it up and having a little more fun with your skip rope. Okay, so the next technique is running on the spot. And this is one of the ways you can really intensify your skip rope session. And we're gonna work in running on the spot and add in the single leg as well. So simply enough with the feet, all you're doing is timing this. You can even go, if you get good at turning the rope, you can go faster. Now, often with boxing, we're on one foot as we push and pivot, turn and pivot. Pressure goes from one foot to the next. I mean, of course, you are always on both feet, but pressure will transition from one foot to the other, especially if you're pivoting and turning. So also what's beneficial is to work the single leg with your running on the spot. So here you go running, and then you're gonna go on one leg. Running, and then on the other leg. Running, and on the other leg. Now you can mix it up how you like, because single leg is much more demanding. You do four or five on the single leg is much more demanding than doing 10 on both legs. So you're gonna feel that you have to switch back and forth. So you do that depending on your ability and your fitness and your strength off that one leg. So let's just go over a little example of how you integrate that into your skip rate. Again, you start any way you like. You can start with your basic skip. And then here, left, right, left, right. And this is not too hard, but if you really want to push it, with running on the spot, you can get some good speed going. And you're gonna feel that in your lungs, you're gonna feel that in your heart rate. So you can give yourself a little break. And then here you go back. And then I'm gonna add in the single leg. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. If I need a break, I can go back to this. I can mix it up with my basic, the kick out, and then running, single. So running on the spot is a great way to really push the intensity of your skip rope while staying with the basic foundation. And if you want to add a little bit more muscular endurance to the lower body, I recommend going onto the single leg to mix it up a little bit. All of these together are the fundamentals of skipping rope for boxing. Your goal with these, the basic skip, the kickouts, the inside switch step, and the running, get yourself up to about 15 to 20 minutes non-stop. That's a great first goal for a beginner. So the next most important thing with your skip rope and to really have a lot of carryover to your boxing is movement. Now it's great for fundamentals to be doing the up and down movement and that because of the motion of the body that still has a lot of carryover to boxing. But primarily in boxing we are moving forward and back and side to side. So the number of things that you can do to get that direct effect, improve your footwork, improve your speed and agility. Without getting into anything too specific in the first example, 
the number one thing you can do to already create that effect is to move around while you're skipping. So go over the fundamentals and basics that we did in the first section, but you're just not gonna stay stationary doing them, you're gonna move around. So let me give you an example of that right now. So I start with my skipping here, and I can run forward, I can even side switch step back, to the side, forward, I can do my kick out here, Left and right, running, back, running forward, inside switch step, slowing it back. I can even swing this rope here like we did the basics and move. Basic hop, side, side. So the first thing that you can do to create movements closer to boxing footwork movements is just don't stay in the same place. Get your feet and get your body to make you travel around with all the different types of movements. Traveling with all the different types of movements will get you to learn how to push off from all directions with both feet. And the first way to get that going is to take the fundamentals that you know and just move around with them in your basic 15 to 20 minute session. So one of my favorite ways for working your feet, similar to boxing with the lateral motion, is to work this side to side shuffle step in your skipping. Also a little bit of a forward and back pendulum shuffle step with your skipping. So let me give you a demonstration of how to do that right now. Once you get the rope going and you're working your basic skip, all you're gonna do is work a side to side motion. Here. Now when you're boxing, that plays out like this. You stop and you start, like so, or if you're ducking, this side to side motion is very important, translating into your, from your skipping to your boxing, because you use it a lot. So when you're here doing your basic skip, and at the side to side shuffle, it's exactly how you're going to be moving in the boxing ring. Now another one that I like that you're going to use a lot, especially if you're punching, when you step forward, is you work this forward step, and you gotta stop and be sharp in boxing. You don't wanna tumble in and lose your balance. You always have to stop and be sharp with that lead foot. So you incorporate that also into your skip rope. It's very similar to the side to side motion, but you're gonna come forward with it. So here I go with my basic step. I start with the side to side. Then left foot is just gonna come forward. I can even make my body go a little bit sideways, like so. Here, close, 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 close. I can go back, and then switch to the right, forward. So that sort of pendulum step again is very important when you're going in and out with your boxing. These two motions, the side to side shuffle and the forward and back pendulum, you're gonna use that type of footwork a lot in your boxing. Incorporate that into your skipping so you're getting the most benefit for your footwork in boxing. So another way that you can work your footwork skipping rope to make it a little bit more intense than the back and forth shuffle or the forward and back shuffle is to work running with an outward stop and start. You're gonna alternate your feet, you're gonna step your feet outward, and you can also step your feet backward. So when I start turning the rope like so, and getting into my regular skipping, I'm gonna start with the running pattern. Then from here, I'm gonna step my foot out and back. And run out. From here, Enough. If you want to just work that pattern, running, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. It's basically just running, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. That's all you're doing is that running pattern back and forth. You're going to work that with the rope. 
You don't even have to do it every second or third time. You can just do it once in a while. Stop. 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 That's going to be a little bit more intense and you're going to come down a little bit harder. You're going to feel that in your calves with the push. Same thing in boxing, we go back to get that stop and start motion when you go back so you can work the same thing going backwards. Without the rope, it would be like so. Back. 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 With the rope. So this is another way you can increase the intensity by working that running. And you're going to feel that in your heart and lungs and your body is definitely working harder when you're running. Also the stop and start motion because you're coming from running is a little bit harder. It's a little more intense. So with that you can really up the intensity and get more of a high intensity effect and carry over to your boxing footwork. So last way you can really push yourself with the movements is to work the single leg like we talked about earlier but adjust that for forward and backward and side to side movement. So first you're going to start out working the rope. You can start with your basic skip or running. And then when you get to the single leg, you're going to go forward and backward. One, two, three. Now if that's hard, you can always just take a break right after that. Or if you're going to continue, you switch legs. So here, I go to my left. One, two, three. I switch. One, two, three. This way with my feet, I'm getting that single leg forward and back, really overloading that one leg. It's all by itself doing all the work. However you want to switch depends on your fitness level and your ability to transition. Then you can switch to the other leg, going back and forth as well. So here I go. Forward and backward. Switch. Simulate the side to side movement and really put pressure on that single leg is to go side to side. So from here, get the feet going. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. You can mix it up forward and back. Side to side. So working boxing movements is very important, not just the up and down that you see in typical skipping. Getting something similar to what you're going to do with boxing. Overload yourself working the single legs forward and back and all these movements are going to have an excellent carryover effect to your boxing. So the final component that's very important for your boxing is the intensity when you're boxing. You got so many things to worry about, upper body, lower body movement, different types of techniques. When you're inspiring, the opponent is coming at you. When you're really putting in a good round of boxing and you track it, it's about 75 to 90 percent of your maximum heart rate, often closer 80 to 90. Skipping rope, because you can get very efficient with those techniques and stay in one spot, really it's very hard to get your heart rate up high enough. So you have to really work to get it there. If you're working with a speed rope, you got to get used to really going fast. And then I'm going to show you some other alternatives that you can use with the cross rope where you don't have to go as fast to get that intensity. But let's say you're working with the speed rope section, the black rope on the cross rope. One of the first things that you can do is just a basic interval. Three minutes with a one minute break, anywhere between four to six sets after your warm up for skipping. So you can warm up about five minutes and then you're going to get into your intervals. The intervals are the fastest pace that you can maintain for three minutes. So again, it's also going to depend on your coordination, your consistency. That's why the fundamentals that we did earlier are so important. So let me give you an example of that pace that's going to get your heart rate up a little bit closer to the 75, 80%, potentially higher range. So here I'm going to go with my three minute pace. This is why this running on the 
Started to feel that, we were going for maybe almost a minute. I would find my sweet spot. Not go too hard, but not go too low to hang around my three minute high intensity pace. If you've been putting in enough rounds in boxing, shadow boxing, sparring on the bag, you're gonna know what that intensity feels like. So it's gonna take this pace with the speed rope to match that intensity. So the next type of workout that you can do to match the boxing intensity or even exceed it a little bit is a Tabata style workout. Basically with a Tabata style workout, you're going 20 seconds as hard and fast as you can with a 10 second break, you're gonna do that for eight sets. Even along the lines of Tabata, you can also just do a basic hit style workout, high intensity interval training. You can go 20 to 30 seconds on, 20 to 30 seconds break, so you're matching the work and the rest intervals match in a one to one ratio. Your goal is to go at the fastest pace that you can maintain for that short sprint section. So let me give you an example right now. I can set up an interval timer for 20 seconds on, 10 second break. The running part is very essential, very important for this. So once I get into my groove and the timer goes, I'm gonna go. 20 seconds. Let's say I go for my 20 seconds at that pace. I'm gonna get a 10 second break. And then I gotta go again for my next set and take that out to eight sets. Or with the high intensity intervals, 20 to 30 seconds on, 20 to 30 seconds off. This is a way, if you have the coordination, you have the skill to work the speed rope to match closer to the intensity of actual boxing. So one of the things I like about the cross rope is that you can switch the ropes from the lighter speed to the heavier ropes. And this is a half pound rope right here, this blue one. And you can up the weight depending on whether you're looking just for more upper and lower body balance intensity or whether you're looking for more resistance for strength uh, in the upper body or muscular endurance. One thing I like about this blue rope is it matches very closely the upper body and lower body balance effect in boxing. In boxing, you're working a lot of legs, moving around, but of course also you're working with the upper body, hitting the bag, punching, moving, ducking, head movement, all that sort of stuff. So the blue rope matches to me more closely what boxing feels like in terms of the upper and lower body. So all you're gonna do with this blue rope is just work a straight interval, just a three minute round like you would work a three minute shadow boxing round, and you're gonna see and feel, you're gonna hear it in the wind, and if you ever get a chance to use this blue rope, you're gonna feel the difference. So here I go. And I, now, first of all, sorry, one thing before we get into the actual rope. When I start to get to the heavier ropes with the cross rope, I'm not gonna hold it with my typical handshake style uh, holding the handles. I wanna grip it almost a little bit more like I'm holding a dumbbell, like a weight bar. So this is gonna give you more control. It's also gonna allow the shoulders and the arms to be in control of the rope, not so much pressure at the wrist. So that's the first thing that you wanna do when working with the heavier ropes. So here I go, and all I'm gonna do is just go into my straight skip. I can still do all my other stuff, kick out, side to side, running. But the upper body is really feeling this one, and as time goes on, it starts to add up. Without being too heavy, like the orange or the yellow one. I can feel this in my upper body. Arms and shoulders, just like you would during boxing. See my grip? I got the forward grip. I'm not going side to side, keeping it forward. Now with this blue rope, I'm getting that upper body, lower body balance effect, similar to boxing. The other thing is, if you're a beginner, 
the blue rope rotates slower. So you don't have to be as perfectly timed with the jump to get the same intensity. Before, when you saw me working on the speed rope, I really had to get those feet going. Everything had to be perfect, otherwise I, I was gonna make a mistake. But here, I can get the intensity without having to worry about that super fast pace. So it's an excellent way to get the intensity with upper and lower body, closer to boxing. Also, get a similar intensity if you're a beginner without having to worry about making mistakes with the lower body. So with boxing, of course, there's a lot of upper body work going on. Punches in short bursts, head movement slips, defense. And with these sort of things, it's not always your three minute interval or 15 to 20 minute long duration. You're working in short bursts and that's where these heavier cross ropes can really come in handy to give you the conditioning and the muscular endurance to help you, especially with the upper body. Also, if you're in other combat sports, Muay Thai or BJJ, you're gonna be working forearm and grip strength. That's gonna help you out with some of your clinching and some of your grappling. Now, with this sort of rope, I'm not gonna to try to go long duration. The intensity is already built in with the weight. So for me personally, with the orange rope, I'd say go for about a minute, maybe with a 30 second break. Still, the work rate will be a bit longer than the rest, but it depends on your fitness. So you're gonna hear it, I really feel this as I go, you're gonna hear it the wind cutting as I skip. Again, I'm looking at getting that dumbbell, sort of barbell grip on the handles. And here I go. You can hear that with the wind cutting. Now my forearms and shoulders are really working. and you're gonna really feel that in your shoulders and arms just like you would if you were punching. And then you can take a short break and again, eight to 10 sets, however you like, depending on your fitness level to build it up. Another thing that you notice as I was skipping, again, as a beginner, if I'm a beginner, I don't have to worry about skipping so fast and being so perfect because the rotations are slower. And there's so much force coming through with this rope that even if it catches my foot or touches my foot a little bit, boom, it's going right through. So benefits for both beginners, if you want to develop some upper body strength and muscular endurance and not have to worry about making mistakes with your feet, but also for boxing because of the upper body effect and the punches and bunches and bursts that you often do in shorter explosive segments while you're boxing. This is an excellent way to up the intensity and get that carryover effect. Okay, so we're finally moving on to the biggest and heaviest of the ropes from cross rope. This is a two pound rope. And this is gonna really push your intensity. And again, also if you're in other combat sports, Muay Thai or BJJ, you're gonna benefit from the grip strength, upper body strength, muscular strength, and endurance. Now with this, the segments are gonna be shorter. So I would recommend even just 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. Of course, you can adjust it as you get stronger, as you get better, or if you're a bigger person with more strength, maybe it'll work 30 seconds on, 10 or 20 seconds off. Right now, I'm working about a 30 and 30 for about eight to 10 sets. So you're gonna hear this as I cut through. This is really some heavy duty stuff on the upper body. Again, I'm working that grip, the upper body dumbbell style, barbell style grip. And here I go. body, shoulders, in the grip, in your arms, in general. Excellent for upper body conditioning, still going to carry over into your boxing, getting more intensity, and of course for other combat sports. Alright, thanks for watching. I hope you really got a lot out of that video in enhancing your skip rope and carrying that over into your boxing. The fundamentals, the movement, and the intensity. And I hope you guys have some good ideas on how you can use the cross rope to really get more benefit from your skip rope and your boxing. Now, if you guys wanna check out more about cross rope, I'm gonna leave a link to their website in the video description below. I'm also gonna leave a link to their YouTube channel because they have a lot of great videos on there that show you how to use the rope, some of the different levels, some different type of skip rope workouts that you can use. Click on the links in the video description below, go over and check out cross rope and some of the products and some of the other things that they offer. In the meantime, thanks for watching.
Peace.